Welcome back to the VMware vCenter Site Recovery Manager 5 video series. My name is Andrew Elwood, Senior Technical Instructor with VMware Education Services. We're working our way through. We've made it to protection groups. Well, what exactly is a protection group? Well, the question I often ask in class is, what does it sound like? Well, it sounds like a group of things that you want to protect together. And in the concept of SRM, what we're really trying to protect together are virtual machines. So one would like to ask the question, why bother protecting virtual machines together? Well, sometimes it's because of where they live on disk. Right? Sometimes you're in a position where you've got a six or seven virtual machines disk files that live on a given storage area network LUN or data store. Data store and uh, those are going to be replicated together, so we are pretty much going to be protecting them together. It's not possible for me to fail over one of those VMs and leave the other seven running on the protected site. So a protection group may actually be partially defined for you based on a storage group. Uh, but when we go to vSphere replication, it can also be a little bit different. So let's explore the details of that uh, in this module. So a protection group. The very easiest definition is a collection of virtual machines that you want to fail over together to the recovery site. So, which virtual machines? As I suggested earlier, it could be because of which data store they live on. If you've got a whole bunch of VMs that are being replicated together, then when we fail over that LUN or that, uh, that data store to the recovery site, the replication will be stopped to that entire data store and will subsequently be in a position where we mount that replicated data store on the recovery site ESX servers and then run those VMs as an entity. Now we can dictate things like startup sequence in the actual failover plan, but the actual act of saying they're going to fail over together is defined by the protection group. So contains virtual machines whose data has been replicated by array-based replication or by vSphere replication. Well remember, vSphere replication isn't controlled by based on where the virtual machine itself is stored. It's controlled by you. You pick I want VM1 and VM7 and VM9 and my database VM to be replicated. And once you've made that selection, you can then choose to create what we call a protection group and those would be uh, VMs that fail over together. So let's look at it another way. Maybe you've got one of those applications that's a web server, a database server, and an application server that work together. They have to have each other in order to perform the functions of dealing with your website. It probably makes sense to build those into a protection group such that they will only ever fail over together. So they're either running in whole on the protected site or they're running in whole on the recovery site. Virtual machines that are, whose virtual machine disk files are part of the same data store group are also the other way to define this. And we've kind of touched on that a couple of times already. If eight VMs live on the same SAN LUN, and they're protected by uh, SAN replication. In that case, we're going to have to protect those as a part of a protection group together. So it's a group of virtual machines that fail over together. So this demonstration is going to go in and showing you that definition. So we're going to take a look at how to build a protection group based on vSphere replication. Uh, we'll go through the full uh, protection group configuration process. So the next step in the process is to build out our protection groups. Um, the link is Fairly straightforward, if we're looking in our uh, inventory on the left, down below all of that, there's the protection groups link. We select that, click the hyperlink to create a protection group. Um, we select which site we're working with and what type of replication you're delivering. And what it then shows me is which um, servers are already set up for protection. But what becomes apparent at this point is that of my three-tier application, I'm missing one of them. I've got a web server, an application server, and a database server, and one of the three was definitely missing there, which says to me that we have not got the replication set up properly. So the way we set up uh, replication on an individual virtual machine is to right-click on the VM, choose vSphere replication, and then answer the questions. We'll set our RPO to 15 minutes. Uh, and then we'll get to choose, and all that really means is that we'll replicate so that we don't lose any more than 15 minutes worth of changes to that VM over its lifetime of replication. Then we simply choose the data store where we want that VM to be replicated to on the recovery site, because again, remember, we've got these guys connected so that they know who's protected and who's recovery. We enable replication for the entire set of disks, or you can choose to disable it for a given disk if you've got a static disk, for instance. Uh, you can choose the type of deployment of disk, whether it's thick or thin, and then you have the ability to assign a vSphere replication server. If you've got one 
virtual machine that you know is going to be doing a ton of changes, it might be appropriate to allocate a vSphere replication server to that particular task. In our instance, we simply chose automatic to let the environment select the best vSphere replication server at the time. Frankly, we only have one deployed in our demonstration, so it's going to choose the only one we've got. And at that point, now we've got our virtual machine set up for replication. So now when we go back to our site recovery dialog box and go back to the protection groups, um, we can say we're going to build this protection group to, to protect our three-tier application. In other words, our, those VMs are going to fail over together. So when we click the link for create a protection group, give it a moment to launch, we should now see that we've got our all three virtual machines available to us. So here we select which site is the protected site, choose vSphere replication, select next, and there's the virtual machines that we wish to protect. So we'll put check boxes beside each of those. Uh, you don't have to select them all, but in my case, I did want to protect all three of them together. Give it a name that makes some sense to you, and we're going to choose protection group name three tier app. There we go. And select next. Uh, get a summary page which talks about how many virtual machines are in there. And we've now built our first protection group. Now this would set us up as a protection group being one of the very first things that we do in order to be able to uh, start the construction of our recovery plan. So you need your protection groups created first and you can look at the various different tabs to see where we're at in terms of what types of protection has been deployed, the recovered services, what the resource pools are going to be, where they're going to live, all the summary information that you would typically look for. So now that we've configured our protection groups, uh, you may be wanting some hands-on experience for yourself. And we offer that to you in our SRM5 Install Configure Manage class. You can find the details about this class at www.vmware.com education.